Hey guys, welcome to the Max Invest YouTube channel, and today we're going to be looking at Amazon stock. Amazon is one of the biggest blue chip companies in the world, which has a market capitalization of around 1.6 trillion, making it the third biggest company in the world, right after Apple and a Saudi Arabian oil company. Amazon, as a big blue chip company with well established earnings, is currently quite a safe company. And it is generally quite safe to invest in some of these massive companies over in the US. However, none of this is financial advice and you should always do your own research before looking into any of these stocks. Now, a lot of you may be thinking, how will Amazon go up anymore? Amazon already has a $1.6 trillion market cap and Amazon is already all over the world. Will it just stagnate from here? However, I think Amazon has room to double over the next five to 10 years. And in this video, I'm gonna show you why I think it is definitely a company where you can achieve 15% average annual returns on. Now, we'll begin by looking at the market opportunity. Amazon has a cloud computing service, which is Amazon Web Services, and this is expected, well, the general sector is expected to grow at a compounded annual growth rate of 17.5% from 2020 to 2025. And as you will see, Amazon basically has a monopoly in this sector, and Amazon Web Services in of itself could grow to be a $1 trillion company, and that's not even the main part of the business. Moreover, E-commerce penetration in the United States is 19.2%. Now, this has grown significantly during the pandemic. However, e-commerce is expected only to grow from here and not to slow down. It is still quite a low penetration. And in countries like China, e-commerce penetration is actually near 40%. So we can see that this can get significantly bigger. And people like Kathy Wood have said retail stores and traditional retail is dying and COVID-19 is not the worst for the traditional retail stores. As we can see, e-commerce sales grew 32% during the pandemic. So Amazon has had a very good past couple of years, which is reflected in the share price. Worldwide e-commerce sales are also approaching 5 trillion and this is an ever growing industry and Amazon is actually a growth company. Despite being the third largest company in the world, it is still growing at a rapid rate and I believe it will continue to do so. Now let's have a look at what Amazon actually does. However, I'm sure many of you will already know what Amazon does as it is one of the largest companies in the world and you have probably had something delivered from by Amazon. It was founded by Jeff Bezos in 1994 and it's a multinational corporation which focuses on e-commerce. It provides fast door delivery for all of those people who live in America and can generally deliver items very quickly. It does, however, take a bit longer overseas. Amazon Prime, which includes free shipping of 100 million plus items, is also contained with Amazon. And Amazon Prime includes music, television, and Twitch Prime subscriptions. This is a massive, massive money maker in of itself, and many people use Amazon Prime TV, including myself. So that's the main business of Amazon. And as we can see, Amazon also have an Amazon Web Services business, which I believe in of itself can grow significantly. This is the world's most comprehensive and broadly adopted cloud computing platform, and it is a subsidiary of Amazon. So it is reflected in Amazon's stock price. It assists businesses in moving towards cloud-based operations, basically. I'm not an expert on cloud computing. However, it is used by tens of millions of different businesses, and it is one of the largest players in the web services and cloud computing space. You, on this service, you can build and run any type of application and it has a learning machine learning services for firms so it can help out firms significantly digitally. We'll also take a look at Amazon's financials to see if Amazon's financials justify a $1.6 trillion market cap. Amazon has a short float of 1%, which is a very low short float, which means no one is really bearish on this company at all. Everyone thinks the company is going to do very well long term. It has a trailing price to earnings ratio of 74. 
However, earnings are generally a little bit lower for big e-commerce companies because they have to spend so much money on logistics and warehouses, which does explain quite a high PE ratio for Amazon. It has a price to book ratio of 16 and this is again due to the logistics costs of Amazon which is why these ratios make the stock seem a little bit more overvalued than it actually is. However, let's take a look at Amazon's net sales. So their net sales increased 38% year on year to 386 billion compared to 280 billion in 2019. Now, this is already one of the largest companies in the world, and they have just grown their sales by nearly 40%. That is insane. I expect companies with a $1 or $2 billion market cap to be growing at this rate. Nobody expects companies this big to be growing at this rate, and it's really good for Amazon. If they continue this rate, they will go very well. And as we can see, roughly $400 billion in sales and a $1.6 trillion market cap is actually not too bad for this company and it's definitely not too expensive. And with all of its future with Amazon Web Services and everything like that, I can see it well and truly justifying this market capitalization. The balance sheet for Amazon is not as good as for all e-commerce companies, it has a total debt of $101 billion, a total cash of $85 billion, and a current ratio of 1.05. It is good that Amazon's current ratio is above 1, as it is a big e-commerce company, and generally with companies like this, you will not see a current ratio this good. So relative to the sector, it has quite a good balance sheet. Now, let's take a look at where Amazon can grow into the coming years. Over the next five years, analysts are expecting Amazon to continue doing what it is currently doing of about 40%, which is very good for Amazon and very bullish. As we can see, Amazon analysts expect 2021 sales to be $474 billion and 2022 revenue to be $557 billion. This is a massive increase from previous years, and if Amazon can continue growing at this rapid rate, they will easily justify their market cap and more. This aligns with what I was saying earlier about e-commerce growing at a significant rate, and if e-commerce continues growing and Amazon continues to be the market leader, which it most certainly will be, it is likely to grow its sales and revenue significantly over the years. Now. The average price target for Amazon is $4,100 a share, which is really good as Amazon's current share price is roughly $3,000 a share. This is a 12-month price target and the low end is $3,700 and the high end is $5,200. This shows all of the analysts love the company and agree with me that Amazon is going to be doing very well over the long term. So you don't need to take my word for it, you can look at what the analysts are saying and they do believe that this company is going to continue growing in share price which is really great and for a massive blue chip company for it to have a 31% upside in share price is pretty insane over the next 12 months according to the analysts. Now let's take a look at Amazon's management team. As many of you would already know, Amazon was founded by Jeff Bezos, who owns roughly 10% of the stock, which constitutes basically his entire net worth. 14.5% of shares are held by insiders, which is actually hundreds of billions of dollars, which is pretty good that the insiders are not selling their shares and they're maintaining quite a high amount of shares. However, many of you may not know Jeff Bezos has recently stepped down as CEO in a surprise announcement. This is a massive change to Amazon's business, as many people credit Jeff Bezos for Amazon's success in the past. However, he is being replaced by Andy Jassy, who was the CEO of Amazon Web Services, and Andy Jassy has worked for, at Amazon for roughly 25 years, so he does have a good idea about Amazon, and most of his net worth is contained within Amazon as well. It's also important to take a look at the risks, and I'm only briefly going to look at the risks as this is a relatively not risky company. It's one of the least risky companies you can actually get in the market with its massive market capitalization and how well established it already is. 
However, the risks are competition. And I'm not saying Amazon is going to be, you know, not the biggest e-commerce player in the world. However, there are many other e-commerce companies that are just starting to build up like Alibaba, Mercado Libre. And in every country, there is almost always one big e-commerce company for the country, which is a threat to Amazon. So that is definitely a risk to consider. And if they lose too much market share, this will affect the revenue and the share price. Another big risk is regulation. And a lot of these massive companies, which contain a market capitalization that happens to be 20 times bigger than the second largest company, can be heavily regulated by the government. However, in the past five years with Facebook and Google and all of those companies, they haven't been regulated enough to actually make a difference to their revenue. And then of course, with all e-commerce companies, you're gonna have inventory and logistics risks. These are inherently risky businesses to operate as they're so costly to operate and they are very difficult to run massive warehouses like Amazon has got. Now, we need to look, is the share price at fair value? And I have already argued that I think it's roughly at fair value. And as we can see, it's finding a base at around $3,000 a share, which I think is pretty good for the share. It's taking time to consolidate and let the moving averages catch up to the share so it can begin another bull run. Obviously, it's hung around the same share price now for around eight months, and it had a really massive spike in share price right after March, all the way to around June, July, and then it's flattened out. So I do think this is a nice consolidation period and a good time to accumulate. However, none of this is financial advice. Of course, if you enjoyed the video, remember to like and subscribe. And if you have anything you disagree with, you can type it down in the comments or leave a comment about what you thought of the video in general. Thanks for watching.